We live? Is We're this live. thing on? <clears throat> Rolling. You hear me? You hear me good? Yeah. Nice and clean. Crisp. All right. This crisp. Is Real crisp. Not, we're, welcome to the Avision <laughs> Show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seismic Dance Event Day 2. Woo, 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 woo. Here day with 2. The one and only Avision. Yeah. Who is my personal favorite. Uh, I said it on the lineup. You make me blush. Stop Don't, it. I haven't said this to anybody else. Uh, that means a lot. On the lineup. But thank, thank you. you for being no, here. Thank you for having me. It means a lot. So you're here in Austin. Yes. So excited finally yeah. to get I didn't eat thing. barbecue this time. What the fuck? What's is a barbecue on? a thing for you? Do you have No, you I do barbecue? like barbecue. Barbecue's dope. I mean, if the, I love pizza, but if there's one thing I want to get down after getting down pizza, it's barbecue. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. What do you what what's your typical order? What do you like? Brisket. You got to brisket. Go brisket. Brisket and ribs. Yeah. Always, always. Then you have Okay, and so you said pizza too. Pizza. Is and my I mean thing. New York, like yeah, you yeah. I love I, Neapolitan I can't tell style you're, pizza. I can't tell you're from New York. No, no, not at all. Was it the pinky ring that gave it away? <laughs> or uh, my cross and my St. Anthony <laughs> oh, emblem and my, my Yankee Saint symbol? Anthony. Wow. We, we, got, got it, oh. we got it all going on. <laughs> See, we got, we got a lot of New York. A lot of New Yorkers are yeah, coming yeah, in the house. Yeah, we're in here heavy. Someone, wear, someone was wearing a shirt inside and made sure to come to the front of the stage. And the shirt said, New York fucking city. And I was like, that is the shirt. Wow. Great. So speaking of the crowd, I know yeah. we talked earlier and you engage a lot and you're reading the crowd yeah. and things like that. So with this particular set, it's a more extended set. So you yeah. have an hour and a half, two hours to really kind of get in the Exten zone versus I'll be, before. Can I correct you? Extended is a little bit longer than that. But, okay, but no, me. yes, for a festival yes. stage, absolutely. <laughs> an hour and a half is definitely a little bit longer than you usually get. Longer. So how do yeah. you change your set compared to the other ones? Um, I, you know, like that? depending on the vibe, I, I try to just read the room a little bit and see what's going to work. You know, um, Chloe's playing after me, so I don't want to play too hard. You know, I, I want to make sure the room is right when she gets on too, just courtesy and respect. But, you know, that towards the later end, I you know, I toned it down just a little bit. But, um, yeah, no, I just want to make sure that the vibes are high for, for the rest of the guys that are coming on, you know. Right. Uh, Growing up, you know, there was always one thing that was taught to me. And it's like, yo, I want to walk into a room that's going off rather than a room that's stale. So, right. you know, I, I made sure, uh, you know, hopefully I made sure that the vibe was right. And you definitely did. And we, she came on in a good situation. And we talked earlier, too, as well uh, about just like warm. Like you said DJ is warming up. I know that's kind of a yeah. controversial thing. <laughs> I, we keep talking about it, but I do think it is such it's a hot topic. Yeah. these days. No, it's, and what, what are your thoughts on all that? Listen, everyone's different. Um, you know, every every now every DJ now has has a sound that you know they want to play, and and I think that's great. But you also need to make sure that your sound fits the vibe that's you're walking into. You know, when when people are just coming in, you don't want to scare them away. You want the vibe to be in there and 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 gearing up for some fun. So, you know, listen, like I said, everyone's different, but uh, you always want to make sure that. Your job as a DJ is to make people dance and have a good time. So as long as that's getting accomplished, you're good. And how is that, especially coming from New York, yeah. New York City? Because I, you started yeah pretty early. Yeah, yeah. Getting in that For club sure. scene. Yeah, like I said before in our podcast, you know, if you didn't open the room the right way, you're getting clipped. You're done. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're done. Yeah. Sound off. You're done. See you later. Wow. No. Have a good night. Yeah. See, you don't see that. I feel like. And you're not getting paid. <laughs> oh, it's like that. Oh, it's like that. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, my goodness. For real. Yeah. Uh, cutthroat. Cutthroat. So what do you think? Again, but I love New York. And like you said, it's it's changed a lot. But where yeah. do you kind of see the New York? How would you describe the New York scene now? New York scene now is still grand. It's still doing its thing. Um, you know, there's some big venues that everyone's playing. And it's, it's amazing to see those venues. I would love to see more clubs come into action, which I'm starting to see more of. I, I truly love, there's something about, everything's kind of catered to Brooklyn now, um, but there's some sort of nostalgic feeling when you go through the tunnel and you're in the city and you're playing in the city. You know, it's so easy for people to get into the city rather than drive to Brooklyn in certain ways. So I'd love to see it come back to New York City a little bit more. But listen, I'm never going to complain about playing at home. There's just right. a certain uh, magic that goes on when you're back at home and People are ready to come see you, especially now that I've built my career. Um, you know, when you come back home, you see actual like fans there that are waiting for you to, and like seeing like my DMs, yo, when are you coming back? And th those are really heartfelt moments for me because, you know, 
you start this career, no one knows you, and then out of nowhere, you know, you start to have fans, and it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful problem, I would say. Yeah. You so know? back home, where yeah. is it like? What is that reception like? Because I know you, we didn't get to talk about this earlier, but I do want to talk about it now. Yeah. His family. Yeah. His family. Always. You did talk about even when I first met you. Yeah. You were talking about how much your family means to you and yeah. how blessed you are, and so I I want to touch on that because I feel like sure. you know people. Especially as they're on their come up, or they're doing things, they feel there's a lot of sacrifices that go into that. There but I feel is. Like with you, you still have a very grounded life. So can yeah, you talk about that. I, I think you know, not not letting things get bigger than your head is is super important, um, and staying humble, and just being the same person that people know. I'm the same kid that people met when I was 15 years old playing a nightclub, and this was always part of the the process, and this was always part of the dream, and now to to start to have some part of the dream come alive and sharing that with everyone behind you is more important than than you know being this big headed egomaniac type of DJ. I don't think people really mess with that. And I, I, I learned that kind of playing baseball. You know, it's a team sport and you always want to be a leader and not a follower and you wanna, you know, carry your own path and, and I've always kind of stuck with that my whole life. I always wanted to follow my own lane, do my own path and, and the rest will happen, you know, and, and being able to share that with everyone back at home is is the dream to me. That's amazing. Well, while you were playing, one of your besties, no, Macy Oplex, oh, yeah. was backstage. That I got guy. to talk to him for a little bit. Yeah. And one of the things that we say, we we're talking about some of the different stories yeah. that you have, but <laughs> one of the things that he said, he goes, I just want to say this. And he was like, that's my peer. Yeah. He's like, I don't see him as no. anything else. He's like, I want him to know that that's that's my peer. That's yeah. my I love, you know, that's uh, that relationship. probably some of the best words I've heard someone say about me. Um, simply because I looked up to Eric majority of my career. You know, it's guys like Victor and then honestly, Eric, like yeah, Victor Calderon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Another New York legend. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm lucky enough that that guy's my cousin. And in the beginning, I hid that for a while because I didn't want anyone to look at me a certain way. You know, like oh, he's getting put on because that's his cousin. I didn't want that to happen, so we kind of kept our mouths shut for a while. And uh, you know, organically, it was it was heard. But going back to Eric, um, that guy has done a lot for me in my career, and I can never thank him enough. And to have his blessing and to have his backing, it means so much to me as an artist because even if his personality sucked, which it doesn't, he's the he man. He says you right? guys are constantly roasting each oh, other. Oh, constantly. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. But, um, you know, even if his personality sucked, I still respect the hell out of him because of his music. But it just so happens that he has he's got a great personality and we're we're like brothers honestly like i i feel like when we're together there's just a certain synergy that we give off for each other and it's the constant like uh i gotta one up this next track or i gotta one up this next record but honestly he's he's the goat he's it's very hard to top him in the studio his game yeah. is super tight and he makes me think differently as a producer without a doubt you how know. does he kind of get you out of that box or what is he what from like another producer it's, to challenge you how would you challenge someone it's else? the fact that he wants you to take risks Ooh, because okay. when you take risks you're put in situations that you wouldn't normally be in and um that that jump is is very hard to get down but once you got it down you can't be fucked with and that's the truth you know when you when you hit a little bit of everything and you did it right that's when you know I'm at the top of my game, and and Eric's done that. You know he's done it with techno, he's done it with house music, he's done, he's done it with electro, I, breaks, everything. You know the guy is an animal when it comes to production, and that's all I want to be as a producer. It's that next realm of production that you want to have, and and almost like a chip on your shoulder that you know what, I deserve what I got. You know I deserve to be on that stage, and and that means a lot to me. You know. Putting in the work in, is a big part of this process, and uh, Eric's someone that put in the work in. And, amazing. Yeah. So what is next for you? Next. Where am I next? Well, next week I go on my bachelor party, so we're off. <laughs> but um, So are you going to fall off the grid for that? Yeah, a bit? it's a few days. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm not playing next weekend, but uh, the following weekend's Thanksgiving weekend. I play in Montreal with Nicole Madaber. And then uh, I get married. Like I said, that's the biggest show no big I play. Deal. Yeah, yeah, no big that deal. Is the it's biggest the biggest show. show I've ever played. Yeah. But um, 
then I go on tour in Argentina. I hit South America for the first time in a few areas. So it's, it's amazing. And then uh, we finish out the year. So amazing. stay tuned. Yeah. Awesome. Well, kind of signature to gray air, enter gray area as uh, they do these rapid fire questions. Yes, yes. Let's so go. Can I, are you I'm ready for this? I'm with it. I'm going to hit you with some harder ones. I, That's know, all I got it. Uh, this baseball player in you. I feel uh, like yep. you got this. Got to think under pressure. <laughs> okay, you ready? Some of these, like I was telling ninth you, earlier, inning, gonna touch on. Bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded. You got to throw a strike. Let's go. There we go. Oh, wait, we got more. Sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> he sent me more. Oh, they got more questions for you. I'm going to ask you some different ones, actually. All right, let's do it. What was your first thought this morning My in Austin? My first thought? In three morning. words. In Austin? In Austin this morning. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather never hear your favorite song again, or be forced to play your least favorite song in every set you play forever? Oh my god, that's a rough one. Yeah, uh, probably um, forced to play my favorite, like my, my least, least favorite, favorite song? song forever. Yeah. Wow. Because I the, the favorite song will get me in a better mood to play the least favorite song. Valid. I don't care if it's the Barney theme song. We'll rock it out. <laughs> you would find a way. Would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? Shout. Because at least you'll be heard. Ooh. I feel like this is an obvious one. Biggie or Tupac? Biggie. All day. Come on. All right. If I looked at your recently played tunes on Spotify, what would you want to hide? Nothing. Tabby one. Nothing. Um, oh, you know what? What's a guilty pleasure song? Then? Let me love you tonight. The buzz because my wedding's coming up. So I'm thinking of like 90s classics that were like Aww. good, but like dance music related. Mm -hmm. So probably that one. OK. Would you rather be forced to sing along or dance to every single song you hear? Would you rather be forced to sing along or sing dance? along? What sound or noise do you love? Shit. A good sub bass. Nothing beats it on the dance floor or anything. A good sine wave bass. If you weren't a, mu a musician, what would you be? A baseball player, without a doubt. Or like an analyst for baseball, some sort of thing. Favorite old school house song? Uh, I'll be your friend, Robert Owens. If you could pick any era of history to live in, when would you pick? What was that again? If you could pick any era of history to live in, what would it be? Cape May, New Jersey. My family's been going there for 30 years. And um, All right. I love it. Okay, we got two more. Then we're yeah. almost done. What's worse? Random people who you haven't spoken to in years hitting you up for guest list or a hangnail? <laughs> <laughs> the guest list, without a doubt. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have someone from like you your fifth? You should go rip a hangnail off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last but not least, finish this sentence. Okay. I love music because. It's my life. Simple as that. And we're going to end on that. Yep. Get with it or get lost with it. You heard it here. Yep. Thank you so much for being here. You're going to hang out for a little bit? Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. We're chilling. You got, yeah. Yeah, I got You're, Eric, TMB's here. Those are my boys. TMB, the Martinez brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Those we got a, we got a fun York. night. So here yeah. we go. New York Let's in go. the house. So Thank you.